Now, complete high school football coverage. This is 10 Sports First and 10. Welcome to the big show week five. This condensed season flying by. So I'll remind you what the Hall of Fame jockey Bill Shoemaker always said. When you're riding, only the race you're riding in is important. So we will heed his words and not look ahead just yet. We will enjoy these great celebrations, lest we get pinned on the rail. Jeff Williamson always draws clear down the stretch. You can see him in the winner's circle by checking out his website, WSLS.com, first and ten. Always the best stuff, which brings us to the feature race, if you will. The game of the week has a couple of programs that routinely finish in the money going head to head. The styles may be different, but the finish line, folks, is still victory. You would expect PH to bring the track meet, Pulaski to bring the lumber. Eric Johnson spent the night in Dublin where the Cougars and Patriots got together. Eric. Happy, you're exactly right in what we said there. PH brings the, uh, brings the speed, I should say. Pulaski County brings the physicality. Playmakers on both sides. Anybody can make the plays. It's just a matter of who would outlast the other. Let's get you to the action. Cougars ready to rumble. Coaches meeting pregame in this one. PH up 6 0. Keontae Kennedy plunges in for the Cougars. 7 6 lead in this one. Patriots going to try and respond. Roy Gunn taking his time. Fumbles the ball here. Recovered by Will Bishop that led to a field goal. 10-6 Pulaski now. Second quarter, here comes PH. Roy Gunn slant to Tayshawn Webb. No conversion, so it's just a 12-10 score. Just before half, the Cougars strike. Drew Dalton to Trevor Burton off the fake. 17-12 at halftime. Pulaski running clock to start the third. Drive stalled, however. Check it out. They ran six minutes off the clock to start the quarter. Brody Cahoon interception led to a PH touchdown. It's an 18-17 game. Cougars down but not out. Look at John Lyman right there in your living room with the huge catch. Dalton will later cash it in. It's 23-18 score, but Roy Gunn late. He was the man for PH tonight. Connects with Jose Kimbrough, and PH escapes with the 24-23 win. Talk about a gutty game. You know, we've Lost a couple kids to injuries, and we're coming in here shorthanded. And, you know, we lose Trace Pedigo in the first half, and, and we lose our tackle in the first half. And, you know, these kids just found a way to keep moving the ball, and, and young kids stepping up all over the place. It's like I wanted to make big plays for my teammates, and because I know how bad they wanted to win. I know how bad I wanted it. I know how much my coaches are putting the game plan for this game. That next man mentality was huge for the Patriots tonight. As you heard, Trace Pettigo went down in that first half. He didn't return in this one. They had a couple of other key guys that also went down to injury, but the Patriots found a way. And Roy Gunn, I don't have his stats in front of me, but he obviously, he would have had at least, I'm going to say, over 300 yards through the air. Big game for him, big game for PH as well. Happy? All right, thanks, Eric. We have an early player of the week candidate. We will check on Mr. Roy Gunn. One of our usual suspects, the Salem Spartans, remain atop the River Ridge and the Region 4D standings, awaiting the outcome, of course, of our game of the week tonight. But they had business of their own to attend to tonight. Salem at Bogle Field at Hidden Valley to take on the Titans' first drive of the game. Hidden Valley's defense steps up. Jacob, pardon, pardon me, I'll have this interception. However, Salem still scored first. Deron Wilson with the floater to Jake Massey. Mad dash to the end zone. We've got a touchdown. Spartans. From there, the Spartans just kept scoring. They had a 35-0 lead at halftime because of plays like this. Wilson to Sean Collins. Long distance connection. All Salem, 42 to nothing. They are 5-0. and oh. Cave Spring at Christiansburg as we stay in the River Ridge. And, of course, we're honoring the senior players tonight. Congrats to them. First quarter, Casey Graham keeps it going on the read option, and he keeps the legs churning, moving the pile with help from his teammates. We've got a student body left, if you will. That set up a field goal for Dixon Arita. Christiansburg takes a 3 to nothing lead. Plenty of reason to cheer here. Second quarter, Casey Graham trying to get it done. This time, though, Cave Spring coming up on defense. Ben Robinson hauls it in and is going to let us know which way the possession is headed. It'd be that way now. Blue Demons, though, went into the half with a 9-0 lead. Another field goal from Arita, 23-6. 
Christiansburg is a winner. We'll shift gears to the Valley District where Rockbridge has been knock, knock, knocking on this door in recent seasons, but they've yet to kick it in. Tonight, another challenge with Harris Harrisonburg in. So let's get you out and have a look. Rockbridge is 4-0, and and here's part of the reason why. Miller J to Nicholas Morando right here, and he takes it in for the five-yard touchdown at 7-0. Third and short, Keegan Glago hauled down by Seamus Looney. Austin Higgins, big defense. Then Miller J going up top. Brett McClung in stride, a thing of beauty. This one going to Rockbridge's way. A lot of defense for the Wildcats as well. 35 19. Nice pick here by McClung as well. They are 5 0. Oh. The rest of the Blue Ridge District battle tomorrow, but tonight the Golden Eagles are in Roanoke City to test William Fleming. Let's get a look at this one. Yes, more homecoming festivities. And this one, all Fleming from the get-go. Nashawn Bonds here, the pick to stop the threat. That'll lead to this. A few plays later, Deuce Anderson rolling in. It's 7-0 Fleming. Colonels, more stars. Quarterback Deshaun Lewis handing off to Nashawn Bonds for the long run. Here he comes. Little shake, rattle, and roll. And how about Lewis going to finish it off himself with the eight-yard touchdown run? Colonel's roll, 42 to nothing. It's not the will to win that matters. Everybody has that. It's the will to prepare to win that matters. We'll head south side to see if the Warriors were prepped and ready for the Eagles' visit. All right, Will and Pride are on the line as they battle for the Brackman's Cup in Allegheny. And later in the show, we'll take you to the home of the Indians to see how they handle an invasion by Holston. Plus this. Thanks to Glenver for the tunes to bring us back as we move south side now tonight. Magna Vista and GW Danville have had consistent streams of quality teams. Tonight we get a closer look. 10 Sports' Brooke Leonard has more. Yeah, Abby, both teams 3-1 and one heading into this matchup. Magna Vista with a loss earlier this season to Bird and GW Danville losing to Lord Botetot in the first game of the season. But both teams have had no trouble finding the end zone, so we shouldn't be surprised if this one is a high-scoring affair. GW Danville first to show off their explosive offense. Willie Edmonds barreling in for back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. He had over 300 yards tonight. But we all know about Magna Vista's speed. Here's DeCavis Preston with the Jets down the sideline. Takes three Eagles to get him down. Sets the Warriors up for a touchdown by Preston. And it's a one-score game in the first quarter. But G-Dub's ability to go to their wide receiver, Shakobi Hairston, in the wildcat position. He played quarterback last year. Might have been the difference maker tonight, adding versatility to the offense and clearly the defense as well with this interception. The Eagles just could not be stopped tonight. They beat Magna Vista 55-13. Edmonds and Hairston with the stamp of approval from head coach Nick Anderson. Well, they're two seniors, and Shakobi and, and uh, Willie. They, they do a great job for us. Willie had a career night. shakobi has been a leader for us for three years on the varsity football team. And, you know, you just can't say enough about the kind of guys that they, they are. They lead our team well, and they're good people. The win tonight makes it a four-game win streak for GW Danville, but a quick turnaround. They'll face Bassett on Tuesday. At the Smith River Sports Complex, I'm Brooke Leonard. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Brooke. Just two more times, folks. Covington and Allegheny will battle for the Brackman's Cup July 1st, 2022. The two will merge. Until then, the lore of the Cup lives on. Let's get you out and have a look. It is the Cougars at the Mountaineers. And here we go, Allegheny up 7-0. Covington ball. We've seen Sean Smith Jr. for years. Look at him. He's the rolling ball of butcher knives tonight. 37 yards later, he's in for the touchdown. 7-6 game. Allegheny first down and five. Handoff Mason Kin Kinsey down the middle for the touchdown. But here comes Covington back at it. Skyler Barnett has the corner. The need for speed and the long gain to set up a score. Covington 28-21 for the Brackman's Cup tonight. And oh, we're going to pause here and take a look at some celebration because it's senior night. It's also homecoming. I know these things have been challenging. You can't have fans. You can't have all the people in there you want. But nonetheless, we want to take a minute and have a look. 
and say congratulations to all. Now, Aiden Walk, he's going to be chased down by the Spartans defense. We've got a fumble recovered by the Giles Jr. Nathan Sheets. And here comes Chaston Ratliff of Giles running that crazy single wing, completing a pass to Preston Whitlock. He is wide open. Touchdown, Spartans. 7-0 Giles lead, but hold on. Later in the second, Spartans trailing 14-6. Aiden Walk to Dagan Williams. And how open is he? Look at this beautiful throw and catch. Glenberg goes on to a 49-14 win. What about Eastmont at Perry McClure? The fighting Blues tonight, and the Blues wasted no time getting on the board. Ty Rooley handing off to John Snyder for the five-yard touchdown. It's a 21-7 Blues lead. Mustangs right back. Adam Bakken right here handing off to Eli Brown for the five-yard touchdown. It was 21-14, but the Blues kept coming. Ty Rooley to Nick Reed, eight-yard touchdown, 28-14. This one goes to Perry McClure, 35-28 in a back-and-forth affair tonight. The Chargers on the road tonight. Bath County, 28. Rappahannock County, 8 was your final. Most people, most people never run far enough on their first win to find out they've got a second. Well, the Bees have found theirs. We'll see if they can keep rolling to top the Seminole when we come back. All right, the balance of power shifted in the Seminole last week when Brookville handled Heritage. But you know what? In their defense, Cam Burns got hurt in that game. Absolutely. So they had to go to the Wildcats. So, yeah. you know, that'd be tough on any team. Nonetheless, a lot of questions as we approach the postseason. Yeah, and when you think about Brookville themselves, that's a team I visited with a few weeks ago. I've always liked their approach to the game. I really like the pieces they've had. They've always been buzzing, so to speak, yeah, when, there it comes, you go. when it comes close the to postseason, but they're trying to break through this season. They look really good yet again tonight. Let's get you out to Russ Burke for the highlights. First quarter, Bees with the ball. Jalen Marshall, 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 waving through the defense. 40-yard carry. He's in for the touchdown, 7-0 lead. Still in the first half. Brookville quarterback Drake McDaniel looking to go deep. Drake, no, that didn't work. Picked off by quarterback Avery Dixon on the defensive end, but the Red Devils will turn it over on downs. Ensuing possession, Silas Rucker in for the 16-yard score. 28 oh, nothing at halftime. Third quarter, McDaniel thrown on a third and four. Tipped by the defender into the hands of his own receiver. 20-yard pass to Chad Pouncey. Brookville beats Russburg. 49 to 8, and the Bees remain unbeaten at 5 and 0. All right, so how did Heritage bounce back? At JF tonight, it was 49 0 at the half. Heritage looking to increase it. Elijah Steele has been basically running the show with direct snaps and running the Wildcats. Man of Steel. He, yeah, he is a man <laughs> of steel, and he just takes off. 56 0. JF would try to get on the board. Kyle Woody would go Ooh. all the way down into the red zone, but he was hauled down. Devin Page would eventually cash it in for a 56-7 score, but this one all heritage. 56-7 is your final. Let's check out EC Glass Senior Night. They're welcoming in Amherst County. Bad snap on a punt for Amherst. Glass recovers in the end zone for the early touchdown in this one. Later, Amherst back on the ball. C.J. Rose drops back, launches it to Chokal Roberson, trips over the defender, but it's good for He's six. In. And he is on the board. Yes, yes, yes. You're He's good, in. young man. You're good. You scored. You scored. Later, handoff to Mr. Dante Martin. Whoops, this ball's going to pop out. Fumble recovered by Glass. High snap to George White. Drops back. Quickly finds Marquise oh, nice Woodruff. Missed some tacklers. Goes in for the score. 35 to 28 was the final in this one. Amherst County will come away with the win. Another seminal score of note tonight. LCA over Liberty 49 to 7. Happy. All right, a couple more scores for you. We're in the dogwood now. Appomattox County rolls yet again. Raiders and Alta Vista over Nelson County, 35 to 14. And before we go, we're going to look in on the Hogahigi District and the Indians of Rural Retreat. Yes, here we go. And as the band gets it started up, it's Rural Retreat with a run game. Lucas Brewer going 80 yards to the one. He gets hauled in. Rural Retreat would cash in for 7-0, so there'd be reason to cheer. Now some defense. Quahim Brooks going deep, but this is a slick pick by Gatlin Height. 
Nice play right there by Lucas Brewer. It feels like we've done this before. Watch the rivet pivot wheel and deal right there, and he is gone. And we've got a whole lot more coming on Saturday. So, Franklin County at Botetot, Northside at William Byrd, James River at Narrows. How about Galax, Auburn, Bland County, Grayson, and Fort Chiswell at George With all coming up tomorrow. I think it's fair to say it was a fine show indeed. Final week of the regular season coming next week. It's all happening. Games happening Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll try to get you up to date on the playoff situation. Until then, we'll see you next week.